For me personally, this book uh, is uh, the realization of a dream that I had for many, many years. It is a multidisciplinary textbook in which we present a coherent systemic framework that integrates four dimensions of life. The biological dimension with the cognitive dimension, the social dimension, and the ecological dimension. And we discuss the philosophical, social, and political implications of this unifying vision. At the forefront of contemporary science, the universe is no longer seen as a machine composed of elementary building blocks. We have discovered that the material world ultimately is an inseparable network of relationships. That the planet as a whole is a living, self-regulating system. It is now becoming ever more evident that the major problems of our time, energy, environment, climate change, poverty, inequality, and so on, cannot be understood in isolation. They are systemic problems, which means that they are all interconnected and interdependent. The fundamental dilemma underlying all these problems seems to be the illusion that unlimited growth is possible on a finite planet. This irrational belief in perpetual economic growth amounts to a clash between linear thinking, projecting outward into the future in a linear way, and the nonlinear patterns in our biosphere, the ecological networks and cycles that constitute the web of life. Economic and corporate growth are the driving for forces of global capitalism, the dominant economic system today. And at the center of this global economy, uh, we find a network of financial flows which has been designed without any ethical framework. So ethics is absent from the global economics. And in fact, social inequality and social exclusion are not just byproducts, but are inherent features of economic globalization, widening the gap between the rich and the poor and increasing world poverty. When you think of it, most of what is called growth today is waste, which means that we have an economics largely of waste and destruction. Qualitative growth, by contrast, is growth that enhances the quality of life through generation and regeneration. Our life, the life of each uh, living organism, is due to an integration of the different parts, the different organs and functions. And when uh, you, uh, like me, sooner or later, begin to get older, then some of these uh, interaction and function may begin to fade away uh, until you get to a point which is called uh, death, which is simply uh, fragmentation. Life on Earth comes from the inanimate matter through a, uh, from simple molecules which begin to interact and form uh, more a more complex structure with uh, uh, more, um, more diversification of functionality, more complexity, up to the point where you reach compartments which are capable of making copies of themselves, the first cells and, uh, or protocells. It's a very simple cartoon, however, it's a reach of uh, very profound implications and controversies. For example, here we arrive at life without any need of a transcendent power, without a god. You remember, no, you don't remember, but 65 million years ago, <laughs> uh, a meteorite came 
and it had an impact on Earth and uh, killed in a long winter all these very nice animals. If this meteorite would be three degrees higher or five degrees lower, if the mass of the meteorite would be one half, if the Earth would have been in another position of the orbit, this would not have happened. And, uh, you know, dinosaurs had dominated the Earth for 100, 100 uh, million years, and uh, there is no reason why they should not have uh, be living for another 100 uh, million years. All living organisms are cognitive organisms even amoeba and uh, bacteria. There is nothing more systemic than the, than the vision of Darwinism. Here we all originate from the same common ancestor. We all share the same molecules, the same DNA, the same protein, the same amino acid, the same lipid, the, the same sugar are present and coming from the same organism and deriving one species from the other, we are really all brother and sisters. This is something Václav Havel wrote when he was in prison. The kind of hope that I often think about, I understand above all as a state of mind, not a state of the world. Either we have hope within us or we don't. It is a dimension of the soul and it's not essentially dependent on some particular observation of the world or estimate of the situation. Hope is not the conviction that something will turn out well, but the certainty that something makes sense regardless of how it turns out.